Hello fellow stitchers. So I'm back to do a little bit of stitching and I've decided to do this little section down here. This is my Lisa Parker design called Bewitched and I'm working in a downwards fashion and I generally work um, a 10 by 10 square going along from left to right. So I'm down, I'm going to try and do these, this square down here at the moment, these couple of squares. I'm going to start there and show you my method. So what I do to begin with, um, if you don't know how these things work, if you use a PDF pattern which you download from the Heaven and Earth Design website, you can mark off your, your pattern on your phone or whatever device that you're using. I'm using a tablet. Um, I cannot really show you the entire chart on here, but I can show you a 10 by 10 square. And as you can see, here are the symbols on the 10 by 10 square. So each symbol is a different color. So if I'm working from a left to right method, I will begin here on this particular stitch. So what's handy about this is that you can highlight the symbols. As you can see here, if I'm going to do this eight, I will just highlight the eights. It just lets your eye keep track of what you're actually doing. So I'm going to go down to here and then I'm going to park on the second row here. So I'll be going left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left. Okay, so let's get going with this. Now I start my stitching by using a loop as often as I can manage it. So basically what I do is I fold a piece of thread in half and I make sure it's not too long so it doesn't get tangled with the other threads. And I'll start with a loop at the very bottom. So I'll fold the thread in half and then I will thread the needle on the other end, keeping the loop at the other. But what I want to do first of all, before I begin, is I want to secure these threads out of the way so that they don't get tangled with the threads that I'm working. So I'm just going to hitch them up at the top into my hair grip. Then we're ready to go. Now the thing with the loop start is some people like to start at the back of the canvas um, I often like to go through to the front. This means I don't have to swivel my design forward so that I can access the back. So my first stitch is the very bottom stitch here. And as I said, with these small little stitches, you do have to be careful when you're counting them. You also have to be careful, and I can feel behind here that there's some fabric. So I don't want to puncture through two pieces of fabric. So I will just pull that through and you'll see that going through there. Leave the loop just hanging a tiny bit out to the front. So that piece of loop is hanging out and then I will, as I'm doing 10 stitch, bottom left. So I've pushed that through the bottom left of the square and I'm pushing the needle up through the top right of the square. That is my full stitch all the way along because I'm not doing a full cross. Then I want to pass the needle through that hole like so and pull it through and that's my stitch made. Now I want to push my needle down again so I'm going to go down same hole I came up in and that'll be my stitch completely finished. Now it just gets easier. So now I'm just doing bottom left, top right, bottom left, top right. And I have to go all the way to the end. And the great thing about this easy count fabric, it's called easy count even weave, is that, well obviously you it's done all the counting 10 by 10 for you. So it's much easier to see if you've gone over the 10 or you haven't done a full 10, maybe you've only done nine stitches and it's much easier to read that than you would if you were just working on a blank canvas, say. So I know that if I'm only doing nine stitches here, this line, this grey line going down is the first stitch of the next 10 squares. So this is where you have to be really careful. That line is not the last stitch, it is not the 10th stitch, it is the first stitch of the next 10 squares. So my 10th stitch in the first block is before that grey line. Now that really drove me completely potty when I started doing this. 
and I was forever forgetting what I just said. But after a while, you do get used to the counting and your brain automatically, um, as it's, it's, it's on repeat and you, your brain's got used to the, the routine, it's got used to the, the pattern, you do need, you, there are times when you can just go on autopilot a little bit and you know that somewhere in your brain you're doing it correctly. What is difficult is what I find almost too impossible. The reason I go so carefully on this count, this very high count, is because if I have to unpick, say, all these stitches out, or even a portion of those stitches, I don't think I could do it because they're so small, I, I couldn't, I would try to be picking out stitches, and I have actually tried this before, and then I just break the thread or it comes up as bits of fluff. So I really want to avoid having to frog my work, which is why I double check everything before I go ahead and stitch. This is all working super smoothly. Working black threads on top of a white background is fabulous, but some people find it difficult to work black threads or dark threads on top of um, a dark canvas. Now I can truly understand the difficulty with that. So if you're choosing a pattern, you really do want to think a little bit beyond the norm. You know, I, I know we, we often act on a whim and we look at a pattern and we, we're browsing online or whatever and we just love something as soon as we look at it. But we don't think about the practicality of it or the practicality of how it'll work out for us in terms of what we're comfortable with doing. We're also talking about the fabric. I mean, which, which fabric are you comfortable in? Do you think the design would look good in a 16 count fabric or a higher count fabric? You know, there's a little bit of research involved there so that you get the best possible outcome for you and according to your abilities. So when I picked out this design, I decided I was going to use 25 count even weave, but it wasn't just because it was something that I decided on a whim. I'd actually tried 25 count even weave on a small sample first to see whether it suited me. Um, it would have been such a waste of money if I'd bought the entire fabric and then found that I could choose it. You also need to think about the details and if you're going to use, if you're going to cross stitch something which has very tiny details, you'd, you'd like that picture to be as large as possible because the smaller your design is, the smaller the details become and the harder it is to see them. Um, the details in this particular design are quite large in comparison to the size of this piece the cat's head is pretty big. It's not like a tiny little cat head over here where the details get so small you can barely see them and it becomes a little blurry or pixelated. Good cat size um, head, um, good size book, good size... There's nothing in this picture really that is tiny that would blur into the background or you'd have difficulty making out. So this particular design for me I think works in a mini. Now there are other designs that I liked that I wanted to do in a mini because I didn't want to do a, a max colour version or I didn't want a huge, super huge um, uh, framed picture at the end. But I found that the, the details were very small on it so it would have not worked on a mini version. So you know, it's kind of a toss up between how much do you really want to cross stitch and how clear do you really want the end product to be.